Hyperbolic? Maybe. Truthful, though, I'd also say maybe. Today, let's talk about the Vancouver Canucks and their depth. Just go over a pretty brief conversation, just kind of ease the waters as to what's been going on with this team. The Vancouver Canucks, for only the second time this season, have posted up back-to-back -back losses. The tweet from Thomas Drance pretty much goes out there and sums it all up. It's very impressive, but... The last time the Canucks had two straight losses in a row was one month ago, October 17th and 19th, against Philadelphia and Tampa. This month, it was on November 16th and 19th, Calgary and Seattle, the two consecutive times with losses in this season. The thing is, if you go over to the replies here, InfoKid has a thing that I think was interesting. The last two games against Calgary and Seattle have not been impressive for Vancouver. Outworked both times. Drance then replies saying, yeah, I'd go back to the Ottawa game. The team's dip in form is now a multi-week thing. And here's the thing. The Vancouver Canucks, if you go over to the NHL standings, are still one of the best teams in the league. They are, at the time of recording this audio, fourth overall. And in terms of points percentage, they are, what is that, seventh in the league? Sixth, excuse me. I think the Canucks were just ranked number five on the NHL's power ranking list on their own website. This is a team that's been pretty good on paper and who has had the results to back up their good play. However, the past two games against Seattle and Calgary were the second and third games in the span of about four days for this team. And if you go back in the Canucks schedule to, let's just say, last week, the Ottawa game. This is when the Canucks started to really become, quote-unquote, shaky. You see, the games earlier than that, San Jose 10-1, Dallas 2-0, Edmonton 6-2, you could say these games were really good games. That San Jose game, absolute domination. That Dallas Stars game, big shutout, big defensive game. I feel like, honestly, that Dallas game might be the most impressive performance the Canucks have put on paper, maybe besides the first game of the season, because that kind of set the tone for the entire year. And then Edmonton 6-2 taking advantage of an Oilers team that was getting all pissy. That was pretty good as well. But I agree with Drance when he goes out there and says ever since that Ottawa game on the 9th, the Vancouver Canucks have started to look just a tad shaky. And even in the video that we made, talking about how the Canucks beat the Sens 5-2, we still said, hey, they didn't play their best, but they still came out with the win. Against Toronto on Saturday night last week, they lost 5-2, they started to look pretty bad in that one. And then the next night against the Montreal Canadiens, where both teams had back-to-backs, the Canucks played a pretty tight and pretty meaningful game. Sure, you see the score 5-2, but you remember that the Canucks had two empty netters and Arbor Shakai scored in the last minute of that game, so it was really a lot tighter than the score would indicate. Against the Islanders, they had multiple two-goal deficits throughout the game, which is not ideal, and then against the Calgary Flames and Seattle Kraken, the Canucks ended up losing those ones pretty poorly. Even yesterday, I'd say yesterday was a bad game. They lost by one, and they had that really cool face-off play at the end to almost get the tying goal, but... Ultimately, the Canucks against Seattle did not play well. We talked about this last night. It's the great regression. It's what everybody was talking about. PDO shot percentage, expected goals, etc., etc. But the Vancouver Canucks are in a position now where if you take a look at what's caused this, quote-unquote, you're really starting to see the Canucks getting exposed in a way. Because I think it's fair to say that a lot of what the Canucks are going through right now is a direct result of some of the guys that are on the team and some of the guys who are not. Pia Suttar being out for quite a while, day-to-day -day listed he is at, is a pretty significant hit. Carson Soucy is missing time too. That guy has been a very valuable player for the Vancouver Canucks, and he was injured a week ago. Admittedly, when it comes to the depth that is replacing some of these guys, I'd say that for the bottom six in Vancouver, it's totally looking okay. Lafferty, Dakota Joshua, these guys are carrying their weight. We know how good Phil DiGiuseppe is. It's why he hasn't been a bottom six forward this year. He's been a top six guy. Teddy Bluger, of course, coming back adds a good layer of defensive responsibility to that center core. You'd probably, ideally, want to have both Suttar and Bluger available to you. But on defense, oh boy, losing out on Carson Soucy was a really big hit. Because yesterday, as we had seen, Noah Juleson, I'm sorry, dude, he's just not it. 
Like, this is not an NHL caliber defenseman. Akito Hirose, for all the great plays that he made last night, there still were a few duds here and there where he completely misses his assignment on the back check. It results in an odd man rush against. Tyler Myers is forced to take the pass on the two on one. This happened quite often last night against a Seattle team that particularly hasn't been great this season either. The point that I'm trying to make here is that the Vancouver Canucks, you could very well say, are being exposed for a lack of depth beyond the main roster. And that's not really anybody's fault other than the former regime. Jim Benning put this team in such an unfavorable position with the amount of players and the amount of cap that they had accrued that it cost them draft picks, draft capital, guys that could actually fill in spots in the now. Let's say, hypothetically, the Canucks did not make the OAL trade and they still had their first round pick from 2021. If you had drafted Dylan Genther or any other defenseman at that spot, they could probably be filling in some roster opportunities right now and do a pretty okay job with a cheap cap hit. Sure, Patrick Alvin has done what he has to try to fix this up, signing guys in free agency, NCAA players, even the trades that he have made have been pretty smart. Fifth round pick for Sam Lafferty, taking chances on other guys that actually can play, like Mark Friedman, for example. But at the end of the day, it's crazy to see just how much a lack of Pia Sutar and Carson Soucy can negatively affect this team. Carson Soucy is such a beast. Like, I did not realize this when he was a Seattle Kraken, but upon coming to Vancouver, he is such a defensive specialist, while also being able to move the puck up ice and shoot and snipe himself. Like, who would have thought? A guy who's capable of blocking shots and taking shots at the same time? Soucy has been so good this year, it's why he got hurt. He was blocking that shot in Montreal. But even aside from just the defensive side of the game, he has been so okay offensively sniping goals and getting pucks on goal that having a decor with Hughes, Hronick, Myers, Susie, and Cole, like, it doesn't even matter who the sixth guy is. You give Tyler Myers less minutes, you give Susie a bigger role, both him and Cole round out that defensive side of the decor, and you have a system that works. But aside from that, once one of these guys gets taken out and you have Noah Juleson filling in extra minutes, you have Akito Hirose coming in there too, plus the schedule, plus the lack of practices, like, it's been tough for Vancouver. And so I'm not going to go out there and say that the sky is falling. Like, the good thing is they did go on such a great run to start out the season, winning against Edmonton, winning against all these other teams, and providing a showcase to us all that they can compete against some of the best of the best. The New York game. New York's one of the best teams in the league. Canucks probably should have won that one if it wasn't for the overtime. The Dallas game was near perfection. The Islanders game was a gritty comeback, even though they probably put themselves in a less than ideal spot by going down by two twice in the game. But I don't know, for some reason, when we were watching that Islanders game, even when the Canucks were down by two, there was this weird feeling that I had saying, yeah, no, they're going to come back. Like, they're playing well enough, they are playing confidently enough, they are going to come back, and they're going to look alright. Against Calgary? Against Seattle? I mean, okay, granted, I didn't watch the Calgary game after the first period, but in the Seattle game, I was kind of, like, checked out by the middle of the second. I was like, yeah, the Canucks are not going to win. Like, this is not going to be their game. Sure, they're down by two, they've come back from two goal deficits before, but I'm just not feeling it in this one. Maybe it's because my fantasy team has been influencing my mind subconsciously, but either way, the Vancouver Canucks have been exposed with a lack of depth on their blue line, with a tough schedule that they have no control over, and with the overall impact as to what guys like Pia Sutar and Carson Soucy can provide. Admittedly, I do think the top of the lineup needs to be a bit better. I'd like to expect more out of that Kuzmenko, Mikheyev, and Pedersen line. As we had talked about yesterday, Elias Pedersen just has not looked like himself for some reason the past little while. So hopefully he's able to improve as the season goes on. Hopefully he's able to recover properly from whatever it is that he's going up against because there certainly is something holding PD back at this point in time. But other than that, all this stuff that we had talked about, the Canucks do play again tomorrow against the San Jose Sharks. And that is going to be a really interesting game because San Jose, I don't know if y'all have been checking up on it, but the Sharks have been on a heater as of late. They've been not that bad. 
like worst in the league bad. So Vancouver does have an opportunity to get their mojo back against what should be defined as a beater team. But if they continue struggling, then San Jose, I mean, they have all the firepower they can to go out there and try to stop that. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Vancouver Canucks getting exposed for their lack of depth. I hope you enjoyed this video. Rolls 99. And bye.